Hi there! Today I'm taking you with me on a solo Israel trip of two and a half weeks through Scandinavia, Northern Europe. In these two weeks I took a bus from my hometown, a city called Groningen, in the north of the Netherlands to Copenhagen in Denmark. I stayed here for a couple of days and then I went to Gothenburg, went to a couple of archipelago islands. If you don't know what that is, I will explain to you in a minute. I visited Stockholm and from there I took a train to Oslo in Norway and in Norway I also visited Bergen. I filmed a couple of clips every and I also brought my sketchbook to paint in it so I want to share all of that with you I hope you enjoyed this video and that it might inspire you for your next trip and there will be a part two as well where I will show you more of Norway so first of all earlier this year from April to July I traveled through Europe for three months by myself I will share more content of that soon but it takes more time to edit because I want to finish some illustrations and next to client freelance work and a new job that I started in September it takes me more time than I initially thought it would but it will be here soon when I was traveling and taking my sketchbook everywhere with me I received a lot of questions about the art supplies I bring with me on a trip I want to make another video about that soon, but for now I have a short clip for you in which you can see what I bring with me in my travel case. This clip was filmed for all the supplies I brought with me on a three month trip, so this time for two and a half weeks I only needed like one mini paint palette and I brought some more white paint, but at least it gives you some visual examples of what you can bring. I love bringing one or two journal clips to keep the paper flat and a portable water mist spray to wet the paint when it has dried. I bring gouache with me. This paint is more opaque than watercolors, but if you add more water, it will have a similar effect. And you are able to re-wet the paint as well each time to reuse the paint. You cannot do that with acrylics paint. Over the years, I've come to love gouache paint and I basically use it all the time and I wouldn't want to go without it. So let's continue. The clips that you're currently seeing are films in Copenhagen. I didn't finish any drawings when I was in Copenhagen this time, but when I was here five years ago, I brought my journal as well and created the following result. I think it was one of the first travel journal entries I made. It's also one of my most popular ones. I see it all the time on Pinterest. The next location is Codenburg. The train ride was around four hours from Copenhagen. I arrived late afternoon and I decided to walk to this place close to the hostel I was staying at to watch the sunset and the view was quite pretty. The next day I took a bus and a free ferry to go to an archipelago island called Hono. It's close to Kodenburg, you can easily reach it. So um, if you don't know what archipelago means, it's basically an area that contains a chain or group of islands scattered in lakes, rivers or the ocean. It's very common in Scandinavian countries. There are thousands of islands, sometimes they're quite small and inhabited, other times they're quite big and there is a lot to do. While doing research for this trip, I stumbled onto some pictures of this island online and it immediately drew my attention. It absolutely did not disappoint because I had a great time here. I only spent one night, but it was definitely one of the greatest experiences of this trip. You can also just stay in the city and go here for a day trip. I rented a bike, just what you can expect from a Dutch person, and I explored this island and the other closed islands that are connected by a bridge. I loved how even though I was here in August during the peak season, it was not crowded and it just felt very peaceful. I was also able to paint here. Sometimes it feels awkward to go to a cafe or restaurant and paint there, but here I had a lot of space and it was not too crowded, so being able to just do what I wanted was very nice. And these are some clips of me painting. I decided to draw some views of the island. Following day, I visited the Aristalen Nature Reserve. This area is known for rocky and sandy beaches and shallow sea bays. You can easily follow the blue color on this road to not get lost. But one time I accidentally went off track and then I fell because I wasn't sure if I would be able to walk there. It made my pants a little dirty, but oh well, at least I survived that. 
Half an hour later, I was attacked by a swarm of mosquitoes and it immediately reminded me to wear long socks while hiking because I had 60 mosquito bites on each ankle. <laughs> Oops. In the evening, I went back to the city. The next day I visited this botanical garden. I was quite tired, so I didn't do a lot this day. I was planning to go for another hike in this other nature reserve in the morning, and I did go there, but I didn't finish it. I realized I was dressed too warm for the weather and I just didn't feel like it. That happens sometimes. Sometimes it's best to just give in and do what you like while traveling instead of doing all the touristy things that you can possibly think of. It's okay to travel on your own terms. And then it was already time to head towards Stockholm. I had an interrail ticket for this trip, but I did need an extra seat reservation as well. It usually costs you a couple more euros, but it's not very expensive if you book through interrail. Just make sure you book it ahead of time, especially in peak season. Traveling from Gothenburg to Stockholm took around three hours. In the evening, I explored the city by walking around. I saw the old town and I had a coffee and cinnamon bun. It was a bit gloomy that day and it was one of those days where I was happy that I brought my raincoat with me. The next day I took a ferry to go to Foxholm. Foxholm is often called the capital of the archipelago of Stockholm. The ferry took around one and a half hours to get there and along the way there are multiple stops where you can also get off the boat to explore small islands. You can buy the ticket on board so that's very convenient. The next morning I had a coffee and a sandwich in a really cute bakery. I just got my period that day so I felt a bit crumpy and just not totally myself. If you get periods you probably know what I mean. But I did have something exciting planned that day. I was going to Cotland, which is quite a big Swedish island. There are multiple ways to get there. The easiest way is probably by boat, but there is also an airport. Its main town is called Fisby and this is such a charming place. When you walk around here, it's hard to not love this town. There are a lot of cute cottage houses and you can find a lot of medieval churches dating from the 12th to the 15th century. Usually you'll find ruins though, because the churches are destroyed due to fires. But I thought this was very impressive to see. I was only here for one night, but I would love to come back here one day and maybe work on some paintings. That would absolutely be a dream to spend more time in this idyllic place. The next day in Gotland, I visited a scenic lookout. It was a half an hour bike ride and I think this is a very great spot to walk around and eat your lunch. There are also a lot of other great spots close by where you can go for a hike back to Visby or go on another trail and you are able to decide for yourself whether you want to be gone for hours or just go for a quick walk. There are so many options here and it's something I truly love about the nature in Sweden. On my last day in Stockholm, I wasn't bored at all. I visited Skansen. This is the oldest open air museum of the world and it showcases Sweden with houses and farmsteads from every part of the country. You will discover its history and find out how Swedes once lived according to the changing seasons. You get a look inside the houses and shops. Not only tourists come here, a lot of locals have this annual pass to visit Skansen as well, since festive occasions are celebrated throughout the year. You can also see wild animals here. You could definitely spend the full day here and have the best time. So that was a summary of my trip to Denmark and Sweden. I will upload a part 2 soon where I will visit two cities in Norway and I will also show you the process of painting two sketchbook spreads. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for part 2. Thank you for watching and talk to you later. Bye!